Hello there, YouTube. Right, you're going to have to excuse the uh, the lighting and general overall shoddiness of this video. Obviously, recording as I'm going along. Just done the uh, last drop of the afternoon, and I'm going home. This is going to be a video called something along the lines of "So you want to be a CX courier?" And it's going to be a piggyback video on a video that Science Man did last night, yesterday, whenever it was, talking about his experiences of being on CX. And it's going to be kind of addressing, really, some of the more negative comments that are banded around about being a CX courier. And this is... Uh, I'm going to apologise for another thing as well. I'm chewing gum. So if anyone's a misophobic, I think it's called, where you can't stand people listen to people chew, then this video's not going to be for you. Anyway. Um, yeah, this, this video's um, going to be kind of addressing some of the issues that people commonly talk about when either being a courier in general or more specifically working on CX. And it's going to be reiterating some points that I've made in the past with regards to the type of person that you should be really in my opinion to work on CX and you're you know the type of person that's the, th the things that you need to consider before taking on this way of life and it is a way of life really it's more than a career in my opinion it is a way of life because it does impact on your life now this is not a glamorous job it's not a job that will earn you riches and fortunes. It's a job that will be very frustrating at times. You will have a lot of obstacles to overcome doing this job. You deal with unscrupulous shippers who will try and bargain you down on price. You will also come into, you know, into factor with unscrupulous drivers who potentially flaunt the rules and drive prices down. You will do jobs that you will hate. You will go to pickups and drops that you will hate. You will have to put your back out and, um, you know, do lots of handball and lots of manual labour at times. You will have awkward pickups and drops. You will have all manner of obstacles that you will have to overcome. You will have to deal with traffic on a daily basis. You will have to deal with a lot of frustrations. You will sometimes have to relieve yourself in the back of your van because there won't be any toilets close by. You will, <laughs> you will have to sometimes sleep in the back of your van if you're that way inclined and you're wanting to do that. You will have to put in long hours, 8, 10, 12, 14 hours to make decent money. You will have to you know, go out there in the freezing cold at this time of year and handball things into the back of your van and wait around for long periods of time while you get loaded in the cold. <sighs> I can go on and on and on about the downsides of this job. And these are things that you've got to be realistic about before you even set about doing this sort of thing. You will sometimes have to chase payment from people you know, sometimes that will be an ongoing thing. You will have to do all your own invoicing if you if you're setting out as a one man band. You will have to do. You will have to think about. You know, all the costs will be your own. You will have to run every single aspect of the business yourself. Should you wish to do that, nobody will help you to do it. Um, these are all things that you've got to do, and these are all things which will put some people off running on CX. It's not a glamorous job and when you boil down what you can earn in a day sometimes from the sometimes glamorous um, gross figures that's abandoned about um, which make no bones about it the other drivers on here will claim our gross figures Nobody goes out there and tries to pull the wool over people's eyes and claim that they are, you know, that they are, that those are profit, because they're not. 
those are gross figures before tax, national insurance and all your expenses. Um, when you boil it down sometimes on a per hour basis, especially if you are running on CX, <laughs> you're not earning a lot. Sometimes you will have days where you will drive to the other end of the country and not get a job back and have to drive home empty and it eats into your profit margins. Or if you're, wanting, if you're not wanting to do that, sometimes you will have a day where you drive to the other end of the country and not get another job and be stuck there and tramped there. Sometimes you will have days where you struggle to do your minimum amount to be able to cover your expenses. And some days you'll have days where you have record breaking days. But sometimes you will have, you know, you will have to put the effort into that and you will have to do 12, 14 plus hours. Um, so this is, these are things that are, you've, all, you've, you've got to bear in mind before you even consider doing this job. And there are a lot of downsides to this job, but there are a lot of downsides to every job that you do. And you've got to put in pers into perspective, and what people don't talk about sometimes is the, the positives, it, it, everything is relative in comparison to what somebody has done before. Chances are, if you're thinking about doing this job, this isn't your first rodeo into any kind of employment. It's very, very rare that you will find someone who is considering doing this job who is in their late teens or early 20s. Generally, most people who are, who are, who are considering joining CX, I would say, are probably between 30 and 55 years old. And they will have experience in either the transport industry or they will be experienced in another industry um, and they will have got sick of that industry and want to try something new. So the experience that you have on CX depends upon what your preconditioned expectations are and also what in relation to the previous employment history that you've done. If you're used to coming from a job when, when, you know, where you've had a high-paying, high-flung office job um, and you've not been used to doing, you know, you're not being used to <laughs> driving a van around for 12 hours at a time up and down the M6 and you've been used to taking home a possible, you know, large figure salary then this job will be a shot to the system and it will be, <laughs> for want of a better word, shit in comparison to what you've done before. If you've been used to working in a warehouse or driving a forklift truck for 12 hours at a time, then this job will be comparatively easy and comparatively well paid to what you've done before. Some people will be in a position um, and I'm going to use an example here of Toby from Firkin Freight. He's alluded to in the past that he's worked abroad before in high paying, high flood jobs and um, has chosen to go down this career path for his own mental sanity to want to do something else. Van on the Run, even though I know he's not doing this stuff anymore, has alluded to in the past that he worked abroad in what can be described as quite salubrious jobs and has chosen in various personal circumstances have left let him left him down the role where he's, he's had to do this for a living and he still at the time enjoyed it it's a similar story for me i've never been i've never i was never a high flyer i'm not an overly qualified person but i did have jobs in the past which were you know of a decent salary and from an outsider's point of view, somebody could say that compared to some of the jobs in the past, that this may be a downward step. But it's all relative. And what I will say is, I'm still earning as much now, if not more, driving a little van around, and for the most part, generally thoroughly enjoying myself, being able to choose what I want to do, when I want to do it, being able to choose 
where I go in the country at any one time. Being able to choose my hours, having a good bunch of people around me to talk to, being able to, you know, focus on effectively one thing at a time, getting a consignment to one address at one time. Not having to worry about much else at that particular moment in time. Being able to switch off when I get home at night, which is a massive one for me. Huge. There's previous jobs I didn't have that. I'm, I'm happy doing it. And some people may think I'm a mug. But I don't care, really. I'm not saying that, you know, CX... I'm, I can only repeat what other people have said. CX is not a magic wand. It's not a guaranteed income. And there are plenty of people who will start and fail at it or start and decide that they don't want to do this anymore because it's not... It's either not economically viable for what they want to do or it can't meet their personal... The amount of money that they take home can't meet their personal circumstances or their costs that they've had to set up. They're not matching that or, you know... The job isn't what the, what they expected, or a plethora of other reasons, and that's fine. This job is what you make of it. it. This job is the experience that you have. You can watch all of the videos in the world, and you can, as with anything, you can you can absorb as much information out there as you can. But until you come to actually do it as a job, you'll never be able to form your own full opinion about what the job is like and whether it is it's for you. Um, and there's a difference as well between working on CX full time as I do and setting up your own career as um, a courier driver with your own personal end users and have been using CX either as a backload platform or uh, something to bolster your income um, that you do when you come got regular work yourself. Um, or, you know, being a driver shipper um, where you have your own customers and then um, use CX to post jobs on there um, which is what some other people on YouTube do I can only speak for running on CX full time which I know in some people would, you know, some people's opinion is a mug's game but it's all relative everything's, you know, every every experience that people have on CX is relative. And this is why you can't compare, um, this is why you can't compare, I'm taking the wrong turn in here, this is just goes to show what a flipping amateur I am. <laughs> this is why when people talk about the figures that people produce when running on CX, it kind of, fades into irrelevancy in, to a certain extent because everybody who runs on CX is different. Everybody's a different person. Everybody has a different set of personal circumstances. Everybody has different goals. Two people can earn the same amount of money in a day running the same van and, and have two different amounts of money that they're able to take home after the, you know, have two different profits because it's all relative to their personal circumstances and this is why it's so important to, before you, you join CX, before you even buy a van, this is why it's so important to have a rough to work out your personal costs, what you need to earn in a day to keep yourself afloat effectively um, and figure out whether talk to people in your local area and talk to people who are running on CX or whatever and see whether it's actually economically viable for you to even do it in the first place before you even set out of course you can also do that and take the run, take the take the plunge, and take the risk. Um, but if it's not economically viable for you to do that, then you may have lost out. You know, a, a large chunk of money. Um, where you but you know might have to you know 
you might have to sell your van or whatever to recoup that. And I think this is why it's also important as well, if you are thinking of, if you are thinking of starting out, to try and keep your costs as low as possible if you can do. Don't you don't necessarily need to buy a new van. Don't take out a finance agreement if you don't need to. Um, you know, start out with the smallest costs that you possibly can. Purely because if it doesn't work out, then you've invested a small amount as possible into into you know into your business venture. And let's not forget as well, putting it into a broader perspective here of things. When you're talking about setting up your own business, none of it comes cheap. And in comparison to other businesses, other business types, setting out in doing a, a being a freelance courier is comparatively cheap to other businesses because the main amount of costs that you've got are to do with running and maintaining your vehicle um, your vehicle is effectively your everything as with other people um, their you know their premises if they have a, a set premises is everything your vehicle is your premise premises even um, and therefore you know it, it, it's the utmost important thing to your business really without that you are you can't provide any kind of transportation service and it, it, it may sound obvious and it may kind of go without saying but I don't feel it is actually reiterated enough um, but yeah I've gone off on a tangent here as I usually do the point I'm trying to make is for people who are naysayers about running on CX or claim that people who are producing videos aren't being as transparent as they could be. I think that's being deeply unfair. Um, because to my mind, the people who make regular CX content on YouTube never go out there and claim that it's something that it isn't. In my mind, I don't think anybody's being disingenuous. And ultimately, Everybody's experience running on here is different and every, everyone's experience is what you make of it. Um, it will work for some people, it won't work for others. It depends on what, you know, it depends on the circumstances that you have in your life. Realistically, I will say, from my opinion, if you're thinking of running on CX and you have a young family, you have a large mortgage, you have a lot of personal overheads in your life. You have a lot of time that you need to devote to other hobbies or interests in your life. Or you have another set of personal circumstances which mean that you can't devote as much time, you know, you can't devote 8, 10, 12 hours a day sometimes to doing this. Then realistically it's not for you. If you're used to a very high wage and a very high take-home pay, realistically, it's not for you. If you're not wanting to do any kind of... Um, if you're not wanting to do the ins and outs of running your business, i.e. putting in admin work um, when you're not running on the road and you're not wanting to potentially evolve and grow depend upon what your circumstances are then potentially it's not for you there are so many factors and variables I could go through a list of others but ultimately I can't I can only document what I experience and I know I'm a lot more cloudy than others in the sense that I don't necessarily talk about the money side of things but that's not my prerogative I don't necessarily, you know, I've got my own reasons for not talking about that type of thing, but there are plenty of people who do, and the people who do, and are documenting it, I don't think are trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. So, when you get people who say that CX is flooded with, you know, 50p a mile merchants and crap companies and 
and stuff like that and you'll never make any money out of it and the people are being disingenuous when people are telling you facts and figures then that's their personal opinion of things but for me it works for the time being an emphasis for the time being um, can I see myself doing this in three, five years time who knows but who knows what the future holds I've got no idea the main things I love about CX or should I say I like about CX is the flexibility of it and the fact that I could always work this around something else um, yes it's a lot of money but but it, it begs the question when, when people always raise the question of the money it always begs the question to me of would you be able to start this type of work without investing in CX and I'm not entirely convinced that you can there are people out there who do and who have but they're probably of a different mindset to me I'm not entirely convinced that you can because I think it would be very hard for you to forge your own relationship with shippers out there if you didn't know who they were in the first place and CX effects if nothing else and I've mentioned this before and other people have mentioned this before is a networking platform and a networking tool and a business directory and okay you pay a lot of money for it but you pay a lot of money when you're talking about business as a whole businesses pay a lot of money for data and analytics and marketing and stuff like that anyway so again it's putting things into perspective you're never going to be able to start you're never going to be able to start any business of any kind with investing any amount of money there needs to be an initial investment to be able to recuperate you know to be able to recuperate a return on your investment and I'm not you know, I'm not massively qualified to talk about this sort of thing because what I know about running a business can be written on the world's smallest postage stamp in bold and italics, but <laughs> I know enough to know that, you know, there needs to be, you need to, you need to speculate to accumulate in anything. And realistically, as I, as I mentioned just, the outlay that you pay for CX to run on CX in comparison to a lot of other business types is comparatively small, potentially, um, because you are just investing in a vehicle, potentially. Well, this is talking from a one-man, one-van perspective. So, yeah, so would, would I recommend, you know, the, the, the whole thing of would I recommend running on CX to people. There's so many factors and variables in it that I can't say one way or the other. Um, I would say personally, yes, if you meet the set of circumstances which I talked about earlier. But again, it's one of those things that you'll never know until you try for yourself. Um, my experience of it has been generally positive, I can only echo going back to my original point what Saints Man said in his video about similar sort of experiences that I've had um, I can only echo and when we, if we are talking about the financial side of it that for the money that I paid and have invested into my CX subscription um, just looking at it from the CX subscription alone my turnover has been, you know, a good percentage higher than that. So, for the return on investment in that regard, yeah, I've been unlucky in some ways in the sense that I've had to purchase multiple vehicles in my time running on CX, which has probably impacts my profit margins quite considerably. But I'm able to draw a living wage from it. And going forward, in theory, it should get a lot easier. Um, and it's also taught me a huge amount. 
I've been running on CX now for just over a year, and what I've learned in that period of time is enormous. I'm still by no means an expert, I'm still a very much a newbie in the logistics industry, and I'm still, at the end of the day, what some people would call a scummy CX subby. But I don't mind being that. And it works for me. You've got to, you know, it's, this goes back to what I was repeating myself again of everybody's, everybody runs on there for different reasons. Not everybody wants to be the next Eddie Stobart. Not everybody wants to be the next C Logistics. I'm not intending to be that. There might be a point when it comes to the future where I do want to grow my business. But at the meantime, I'm happy being a one man, one van person and drawing what very modest wage I can from it. So it all, again, it all depends on what your expectations are of joining this industry. And it all depends on what your relative life experiences are and your previous life experiences and the reasons why you're coming into this. So I'll leave it with it, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at this point. So what I want, and this will be a shameless rip-off again of some other guys, is I want a bit of feedback from you guys. And I want a bit of feedback. It can be a, a, a video, it can be a comment, whatever. Uh, I will leave my email address, which I use for my YouTube channel, in the description below. So if you want to upload, you know, email me some content about it. But I want to pose a question to you, which is, those of you who have started in CX, started running on CX, I want to know a bit about your backgrounds, and I want to know whether you think it's worth it or not. I want to know the good and bad, and I want to know your personal experiences of running on there, and what you think is good and bad about running on CX. So, yeah, just a bit of a, uh, an interaction for you all, really. Um, just just be a, an interesting, uh, well, form an interesting dialogue, I think. And once again, you know, my videos are not by any means the most professional out there, far from it, in fact. But I'll just talk about what I know and my experiences. I've got a few... Uh, I'm, you know, I'm probably out of all the YouTube guys, probably the guy who uploads the least. Purely because a lot of the time it's mainly done on an impromptu basis. And <laughs> the way I'm wired mentally, consistency in this regard, in uploading, is not my strong point. And I made no bones about that. So I generally only really upload when I've got something to say. But that being said, I have got a few ideas in the pipeline and a few uh, videos which I want to upload um, to draw some more discussion points and um, I want to get you guys involved more as others have done so yeah um, this may or may not be the uh, last video that I upload before this side of Christmas but if it is I want to wish you all a very merry merry Christmas a very, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I want to say thank you all for watching. I appreciate each and every one of my 380 plus subscribers. And, um, you know, I never thought when I started this that sitting to me rambling on about nonsense in a van would draw that many people, but clearly it has. And uh, who knows? I might even start uploading more regular week in the life stuff again, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, apologies once again for the rambling nonsense fest. I did want it to be more professional than this, but again, it's been impromptu at best. And as, as always, I welcome any kind of uh, interjection in the comments or opinions out of that. I never censor anything. Yeah, I want your opinions. So, once again, thank you for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tall Man Small Van out.